Hey y'all, happy Tuesday. How are y'all doing today? We are not going to be long today. I promise you that we're not going to be long today. Today, I'll be answering any questions that y'all may have about the X-Tool Dio Laser. Um, also, we're going to be making a quick rhinestone shirt. I was going to see about maybe cutting something on the laser. We'll see. Um, but that's pretty much it. Like, we know. And because I have a whole bunch of stuff I have to do. And my, I have some Etsy orders to ship out. My Today, y'all. When do I ever get on here and be like, hey, y'all, today was just perfect? Never. It was a hot mess. But hey, y'all, let me see who's here. And if this is your first time here or if you're catching the replay, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And also make sure to hit the subscribe button. I hope you choose to stick around. I'm Patrice, and I love to craft all the things and all the machines. So head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join me there as well. I would love to have you on all platforms. But hey, y'all. Hey. Hey, Heather. Happy Tuesday. Hey, Mare Bear. I dropped my scissors. Hey, Mare Bear. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, Taryn. And Barb. Hey, Barb. Barb, so that hat video that you posted about sewing um, a hat, girl, you know I got to try that. Like, I really want to try that. I just got to find the time. Um, I still have to finish up a few of the items for my cousin. And I'm going to probably do that tomorrow. I might hop on again tomorrow. Just so that y'all know, we will not be having crafts and combos on Good Friday. Um, so I'll see you guys on Tuesday because I won't be on here either on Easter Sunday. So I'll see y'all on, um, next Tuesday, but I might come on maybe on Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday, we get out of school a little bit early. So I may come on and do like a crafts and combos Thursday edition. I don't know. We shall see, but it's almost time for my cousin to have her baby. And I have a few more items that I need to finalized so that she can pick this stuff up this weekend but yeah and i'm going to show you guys the laser box um software for the x tool in case you're interested um there is the light burn software that you can use with it also i have not downloaded the light burn software because i haven't i don't think i'm gonna have that much time to really uh, focus on it but today's gonna be really light y'all it's not gonna be a heavy session um but we are going to make a shirt and I have like three more DTF shirts that I need to press for my cousin. And then we are done. But hey, Barb. Hey, Kirsten. Welcome. Hey, Marissa. Hey, Fabulosis. As y'all see, I don't have my tea. Um, today, we had a cold red almost all day today. And it was a real one. It was not a drill. So that was a little bit draining and I had all of my kids in the classroom with me. And if you know anything about students who have disabilities, not just cognitive disabilities, but students with learning disabilities, ADHD, ASD or anything, there were so many behaviors and just all for an extended period of time. And so I had to keep them calm. And then the ones for the ones who thought it was a joke, I had to get them to stop from laughing and making noise because my classroom is in the back of the school and it's in a portable and we are like outside and I love it. I absolutely love it. My kids absolutely love it. They love leaving out the school. We get fresh air. We do all types of stuff. So it was something going on outside of the school. And so yeah we are yeah so it was a mission trying to keep them calm with all their behaviors and everybody wanted to sit next to me and these are high school kids yep so that was my day and then i still had other stuff to do so i had a little bit of catching up to do 
but it's all good y'all it's all good it is all good we are here tonight we made it to another crafty talk tuesday and that's what matters hey nicole welcome so y'all i'm gonna switch over to the let me try to get down a little bit further hey spy rockets i promise you i'm not keeping you on too late tonight but we may have a thursday crafts and combos edition we may because I really want to show you guys the X tool um, because it really is cool. It's a lot different. It's not even a lot different from the Glowforge, but I get a lot of people asking me, so which one do you prefer? Like, is it better than the Glowforge? Um, it's not as powerful as the Glowforge. That's one thing. So certain materials and certain thicknesses, it can't get to like the Glowforge. But y'all, it is, it is awesome, especially for a beginner. I would not have uh, minded having this as my beginning or my beginner's laser. So, but hey, Miss Ruth, if I didn't say hey, I don't remember, honey fun. Hey, Ethel, welcome. Spy Rockets, I think I said hey. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Sequita, I think I said that right. Hey, Dempsey Boo, happy Tuesday. Hey, Miss Gloria Wright, you're in my hometown. Well, not South Miami, but Miami. That is, that's my place. But hey, Miss Gloria Wright. Yeah, I'm scrolling, y'all. It's about to be a scroll. Hey, Shay Shay, welcome. So I'm going to switch over and then I'll still be talking to y'all while I kind of like um, do a little bit of work. But if y'all have any questions about the X tool, you know what? I'm trying to see if we'll see. Maybe that'll be a Thursday project. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Beverly. Welcome. Hey, Edna. Hey, Flawless. What's up? It's been a minute. I hope all is well. I know you're still over there kicking butt in DTF land. So, hey, and welcome. Happy Tuesday. Yeah, I'm scrolling. Hey, T Create. Hey, Miss Deborah. Miss Deborah, I have not sent your shirt out yet, but it will go out probably on Thursday. Should have go out on Thursday. Big Boy Prince. Big Boy, I loved the show that you had your live the other day. It was very informative. I got a lot of information. So thank you for, for doing that. Big Boy had a show on Saturday about DTF printing. So I don't know if you all uh, wanted to check his channel out. And then he had other people on there who know um, a little bit about different printers for DTF. So check it out. It was Saturday's show. It was um, his last laugh because Big Boy has not been going on live that much anymore. But yeah. Hey, Crafty Leo. Welcome, y'all. Hey, Paula D. Hey, Sharon. Happy Tuesday, girl. Hey, Kiana. So let me click over, y'all. I'm going to add my table to the stream. And as y'all see, I got me some bling over here. Mr. McCracken. All right, so we're just going to do a quick shirt and... Uh oh, I'm gonna make myself smaller. And then I'm also, if you guys are interested in seeing the software for um for the X tool, we can um do that. It's the laser box, it's very simple. Um, I don't, it's not really a software that you can create your cut files in. I don't think you can create basic things in there, but um I've been creating inside of Adobe Illustrator. So we might create something quick inside of Adobe Illustrator so that I can kind of show you all how it works. We'll see. So I'm just going to go ahead and peel this. And I do have a shirt that I have over on the heat press, but I'm still doing those uh, DTF. I have like maybe five more uh, shirts to do for my, for my cousin. And I'm gonna make, ooh, maybe we'll do that on Thursday. Maybe we'll make one of the car magnets because I have to make a few car magnets for my family. Cause, yeah. Hey, Ashita, welcome. Hey, Wanda, if I miss you guys, I'm so sorry. Y'all know I, I was on a little bit late. 
Um, today, I actually came home and I came home late. Hey, Roslyn, what's up? How you been? I came home a little bit late and I kind of jumped into bed for a few minutes because I couldn't help it. I was just tired. Hey, Kenya. So, Angel. Hey, girl. Angel, you going live tomorrow? What are you going to be doing? Hey, boo. Hey, boo, hey. So, y'all, that's what we're going to do really quick. Um, so, somebody the other night when I was unboxing the rhinestones from the baby booty, um, one of y'all said that for the yellow, I should do like a sun kiss. Um, shirt and that's what we're gonna do today it's a it's gonna be a very simple shirt it's just gonna say sun kiss and yeah uh oh did i i'm trying to make sure that i didn't oh i got why y'all didn't tell me i had my tool all in your face like that somebody supposed to tell me and say something like girl get that junk out of our face that's what y'all supposed to say hey you still Hey, Lakeisha. So, yeah, y'all. I'm about to scroll down. So, if y'all have any questions about the X tool, please let me know. Anthony, that's ridiculous. Anthony, how long have you had your Glowforge now? It's been... It, has it been like six months since you've had the Glowforge and you have not even turned it on? Why did you get it? Why did you get the Glowforge? Why? I'm trying to I'm trying to understand why you got it if you have not opened it. Y'all with glitter font with glitter HTV, it's always a little bit so challenging finding these cuts. At least for me. I don't know about y'all, but for me it's a little challenging. Y'all, we're not doing anything spectacular tonight. The night is gonna be a very chill night. We're gonna make us a shirt. And we are going to call it a night. Well, I do want to kind of show you guys that X tool a little bit because y'all. So if you are looking at that X tool, they have another um, rotary coming out. Let me pull up that rotary so I can show y'all real quick. Thanks, Mirror Bear. Yes, y'all. Please hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate it. Hi, Sheila. Welcome and thank you for being here. I appreciate you dropping in and hanging out with us. I hope you enjoy your time here with us. Hey, Kim. Hey, Danny. Who told me to do like a sun kissed um, one? And this isn't even the one that I really want to do, but we're going to do it. Um, we're going to do this one on a shirt, something very simple. But I'll probably make a better design. So if my members want this, it's nothing major, y'all. It's really just vinyl with a with the sun and kiss is gonna go in it. But if you want this and you're my members, let me know and I'll put it in the member chat. Hey 50 fine, welcome. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Hey Sam, welcome. Hey, Clarissa. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. All right, y'all. I'm scrolling down. I don't see any questions about. All right. So Angel's going to be on tomorrow, y'all, at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. She is not sure what she's going to be doing, but she will be on. So make sure you have your notifications set for her channel. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, no, that's the hardest, especially when you, Rosalyn, you've been out for a while, girl. <sighs> that's hard, especially to get back into everything. It is hard. <laughs> Sean, me, Nicole. Hey, sis. Happy Tuesday. And I loved those Easter eggs that you made. The X to M1, y'all. Fabulosis, it was you that told me to do the sun kiss. Well, girl, it's going to be, I'm going to put it inside of the community, um, inside of the member community area. And I'll probably do an updated file of it because this 
it's just very basic. It's just a sun with the word kissed going through it. So nothing major, but if you are um, interested in it, y'all, you'll see how quick I, I forgot what I was trying to show y'all. It's a mess. All right, let me see. I'm not in the screen right now, y'all, because I'm trying to pull up this. Um, oh, I could go to my Facebook group and show y'all, I think. Did I put it there? I think I did. So if you're interested in the X tool, they have another um, another rotary attachment coming out. Now, this rotary attachment is not included with the kit the one that's included i'm going to show you guys real quick i know we're all over the place today y'all but bear with me it's been an over the place type of day all right so this is the rotary attachment that comes with it and if you saw the video you guys saw it inside of the video when i made that um when i made the tumbler but I'm going to show you guys. Oh, Miss Stacy. I didn't even see that. Y'all, I'm just going on here when I post. Okay, I'm going to show that. Hold on. And if you are not on Facebook or if you are on Facebook and you're not in our group, please head over to Facebook and join our group. I'm going to share my screen really quick. And then I'll go through this rotary this is the rotary that comes with it right now. And so you really, you have that that machine, and I'll show you guys the machine a little bit, um, but this is the rotary. And so these are adjustable where you can, you have to, like, there's like a screw here, and then you just unscrew it, and then you can kind of adjust it to go over depending on um, your, your item, whatever round item you have, and so that it could fit nicely in the center. But all you do is you plug the cable in, and y'all, it's it goes great. But this is this is the rotary, and so as it's cutting, um, it rolls. So based off of what is in the software, it will just go ahead and um, scroll over over your round object. So that's this basically it. Look how light and easy it is, and that's one thing that I think that it has up on the Glowforge especially at it being such a low price because right now it's about $750, but it is um, usually like $1,000, I think. And I think that's what it has over. Oh, what did I do with my, did I just move the, oh, y'all know I'm always losing stuff in here. So, but I think that's one thing that it has over the Glowforge is because um, that rotary attachment, you cannot do that with your Glowforge, no matter what you try, um, like the small shot glasses, you can probably do small shot glasses in the Glowforge. But like how I did that 30 ounce tumbler in the X tool video, you can't um, do that inside of a Glowforge. So that's, you know, I think that's one way that, you know, it has a little advantage over the Glowforge, even though it's not considered a powerful a tool as a Glowforge. Somebody told me like, I should not say that it's the best laser. Well, I'm saying that it's the best laser for like anybody starting out a small crafter. I definitely think for, for us in crafting, especially with that price point and the price difference between that and the other major lasers, it's worth it. It's, it's definitely worth it. You guys saw, I can't even find that keychain I made. Maybe we'll try to make a keychain tonight. Y'all want to I'm going to, we're going to do something really quick. All right, let me press this real quick. Let me do this and then we'll go and look at um, the the rotary. Well, not the rotary, the X tool. So I'm going to show you guys. Um, I'm going to show you the, hey, Sezzy Mocha Crafts. Welcome. Thank you for being here and thank you for joining. We appreciate it. Let me share my screen. Um, where is it? Here it is. All right. So this is this is the new rotary that they're gonna have. It is an additional fee for this particular rotary, but y'all wait until you see this rotary. And it's supposed to be um, launching, I think, tomorrow 
or Thursday. So if you're thinking of this machine, consider this rotary. Also, um, they're going to have a live to show, you know, more information about this. All right. So let's get ready and get started. Hold on a second, y'all. Sorry, y'all. All right, let's see. Look so cool y'all i'm going like laser crazy over here so check them out tomorrow um i don't even know what their youtube channel is to be honest but i will probably post a link to it once i find out okay but it's gonna be it's so it's like so many different things that it can do with the current laser now like there's a way that you can etch on glass or engrave on glass but they suggest putting like a certain coating on it well, with this, with that one, they're saying that you, I don't even know what they, like, there's, they have a new one where they say that you don't even need all of that. So I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see. But it looks amazing. It looks amazing. Hold on, y'all. Hey, T. Shay. So that was, hey, Marianne. So that was, hey, Coretta. T. Shay, that was the X tool. Um, D1 diode laser and it's a it's a lot more economical than a glow forge. The only difference, well, not the only, there's several differences. But the major difference is, is that it's a 10 watt laser. The glow forge is a 40. So meaning the glow forge is a little more powerful. But depending on what it is that you're trying to do with it, um, it may be something it's I think it's a a good, good starter. Um laser because i was able to do really really good projects in it i was looking for it but y'all i've been trying to clean up and get rid of stuff and it's latricia here because if she is shout out to latricia for being amazing bye fifi all right so hold on thank you dims so they will be having um, a YouTube live tomorrow showing it a little bit more, but this is a dial laser. It goes, well, the laser that I have, uh, it goes for about a thousand dollars and right now they have it on sale. Right now it's on sale. All right. Hold on. That was pretty quick. We got those rhinestones and they're really, really quick. Little to no issue. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. All right. So tonight is going to be real quick, y'all. The first time using it. So honestly, this for a beginner is really, really good. Especially if you're testing it out, T. What is it that you're you're looking to do with your laser? It depends on what you're looking to do with it. The one thing that I can say about this one, y'all, is that oh, I didn't get my my tweezers. The one thing that I can say is is that so it doesn't come with a crumb tray. You have to buy the crumb tray. And what the crumb tray is, it protects your table, it protects your surface. And so they do sell that. Um, you know as an added item with the tool. Um, also, it's open. So you have to be in a heavy, heavily ventilated area. You really need to be in a heavy ventilated area. Um, you need to wear uh, protective glasses. It does come with, oh, y'all, I got to talk about these markers. I was so disappointed with these Caesar markers, y'all. I thought this, I thought that was going to be nice and vibrant, but it was not vibrant at all. 
Um, but it comes with these protective uh, glasses that you need, okay? You need protective glasses like this, not just regular glasses, because of those laser lights, all right? So you definitely want to, you know, look into that. Lasers, before you get a laser, you want to make sure that you are... Um, that you look at all of the safety requirements, all the precautions, because lasers are very dangerous machines, y'all. They're very dangerous machines and they are very powerful. And sometimes we'll start cutting. You need to make sure that the items that you want to cut, that they can be cut. All right, so with the Glowforge, it's a CO2 laser. So you have to be kind of careful a lot with, you wanna make sure that you have it vented out of a window or you have the air filter. Also, you want to check the different materials that you're you're cutting, and you also want to check to see what's you know any coating that is on these items, because they, with the laser and the items and the substances on it, it can produce different flames. It can produce different gases. So you want to make sure that you. Um, always research what it is that you're going to be cutting before you even cut. All right. So that is very important. I know the, the lasers look fun, y'all. They look fun. They can do so many different things um, that, you know, our regular cutters can't do. And they can do it a lot quicker than a lot of the cutters. But you always want to make sure that you are practicing safety because this is in, well, this, my laser is in my house. And, you know, whether it's in your house, garage or whatever, that's still your house and you don't want anything to happen to it, you know. So you need to make sure that you're looking at all of the safety precautions. Gla cups, glass, wood, etc. All right, so tea with cups. Um, your Glowforge, if you get the Glowforge, you're not going to be able to do uh, cups with it. So you can do like the smaller, like shot glasses, small, very small round items. And the problem is, is that with a Glowforge, um, it's pretty stationary, right? So you're going to have to kind of station it, you know, put it and it's the laser is just going to go. Now, if the glass is not turning or the cup is not turning, your the laser is just going to be hitting um, air or it's gonna be hitting the side of um, the item. So it's not really going to give you like an even turn around. So the the rotary laser, and I'm not I'm not endorsing this over Glowforge, but I do like it. And I, I actually love this machine. To be honest with y'all, when um, I got the machine and the company gave it to me, I said I was gonna do a review of the item and then I was just gonna give it to my friend. Well, he can't get it. <laughs> I'm not giving it away. I like this machine. I actually love this machine. It was very easy to use. Um, putting it together was a little bit intimidating, but it's it's worth it. So what this does, this little contraption, this is the rotary turner, turner for the X-Tool D1 laser. And what this does is, is that as it's um, as the laser is engraving, it's turning the cup or it's turning whatever round object so that the engraving is even on it. I was going to see if I could find find um, find the cup I had. What did I do with it, y'all? <laughs> I didn't give it away yet. But that's that's the difference. So with the Glowforge, first of all, with the Glowforge, you're going to have to build your own type of um, contraption to fit your cup inside and you're going to have to hope that it is not tall enough too tall so that your laser can get underneath it and then you're going to have to make it small enough to where it only fits in a certain area where that laser can cut because if you have it this way and your item kind of you know your image you want it to wrap you can't do a full wrap with the glowforge with the x tool it comes with risers i'll show you guys in a minute it comes with risers so that's what allows, you know, especially taller items to be engraved or cut because you can lift it up higher and that laser will cut over it. So that's one of the plus sides with it not being enclosed, but that's, you know, with it not being enclosed, that's also, you know, more fumes being out. You definitely want to have it ventilated. 
So I hope that was helpful. Fabulosa is those tumblers. Did you get them on sale? Please tell me you got them on sale. So the tumblers that I did from Joanne's, I got them. I, got, I did get them on sale, y'all. I got them on sale. They still were like nine dollars, but I got them on sale. The ones when you buy the Make Market um, tumblers from Michaels and you have your discount, and sometimes they're on sale. You don't know Michaels quick to put something at 20, 30, 40 percent off. That's the time to buy them is when they're on sale. All right. So now I have everything in my sun. That was really quick. Everything is inside of the sun. And we are going to put this on the transfer tape. And you just want to make sure that you don't have any extra um, rhinestones on top um, of like in or in between any of the rhinestones. You want to make you only sure that you have rhinestones only placed inside of the holes. Because if not, that could hurt your rhinestones from transferring onto your shirt. And we are going to do this. And then I'm going to show you guys the X tool. Well, I don't know, y'all. That's my plan. So any other questions about lasers, X tools, Glowforge, Bell's Cousins, let me know. Hey, Sean. Happy Tuesday. Hey, Martha. Martha, how's your husband? Is he better? Is he home now? All right, y'all. So we are going to take a sip of ginger ale. Let me get this. And then I am going, oh my goodness, y'all know how bad I am with this, right? Y'all knew how bad I am with this. So it's the X tool. D1 Diode Laser by MakeLock. It's an X tool. I have a video showing when I unboxed it and when I ungraved about two or three videos ago. About. Um, so when you go onto my homepage, go click on videos if you don't see it there. Um, click on videos and it's going to be like, and it's actually going to be me of uh, the video or the picture shows like the Tumblr that I was engraving at that time with, um, it says X tool on it all right and so the video that i showed a few seconds ago like that little promo video that video um is showing the latest rotary that they're going to be releasing so but he's getting better thank god martha i'm glad that he's getting better all right so we're just going to place this on top and then i am going to make sure that this gets on here we are going to and so it's going to kind of go like this y'all it's just going to say, like, it's just says sun-kissed. And we are going to, first, I'm going to put the glitter on there. And this was, I think Fabulosa said that she's the one who told me to do a sun-kissed one. I'll probably do another one. But if if y'all want this, members, please let me know. If not, I'll go back to the drawing board. It's nothing fancy. It's definitely nothing fancy. And these uh, rhinestones, y'all, if you didn't see the live from the other night, these rhinestones are from the baby's booty. And this is a new treasure trove collection that she has. It comes with uh, a neon pink, a neon yellow, a neon orange, and a neon blue. All right. So thanks, Sean. <laughs> and Sean, I don't even think that this is major. <laughs> I don't even think, Sean, I do not even think, I, I don't even think this is major at all. Okay. I will. It, it, Y'all, I wasn't really impressed by it, but if you guys like it, it's very simple. Let's see. Hey, T. Hill. <laughs> hey, Dr. Cooper. All right, so... That all came all off just fun. But why is it so sticky? I've used too much of this transfer tape, y'all. I don't know what's going on with me and transfer tape late, but at least we didn't have a disaster like the other night. Remember? Remember that disaster we had? All right, so I'm just going to put this on a black shirt. 
and we're going to see how it comes out. And then we're going to look a little bit at X tool. Um, we're going to look at that laser box software so I could show you. Um, I'm trying to think if somebody else asked me something that I wanted to cover tonight. I got to, I don't remember. All right, guys, I'll put in, Hey, SACC. <laughs> Barb. I got it, girl. I'll put it in. I really didn't think that it was that good. Well, I don't still. I don't. I did not mask. That's pretty, but oh, I love rhinestoning. I actually love rhinestoning. So let me. I'm gonna click from over here, and then we are going to. I don't have the. Um. I don't have it set up, y'all, today. So. Sorry, y'all. I don't have it set up. The camera over there on that side. I just, yeah. I don't. All right, let me get the shirt that we're going to use. And, uh-oh. So remember I told you guys that I was finishing the shirts for, I have like about six shirts left to do for my cousin. So that's what I am. That's really, I need to get off and do that. And so I just got to press that one down. And I thought I didn't have any more lint rollers. And I usually buy like a whole bunch when I see them. And I'm like looking for some because I ran out of the other one that I had and I found it, y'all. Thank God I found it. All right, all right, all right. So I'm just gonna press it for a few minutes. And then we're gonna put the Rhinestones on top. So first, before we put the rhinestones on top, we're going to put the vinyl on first, the HTV, because once you put the rhinestones on, it's going to be, the, the area is going to be lifted. And so when you go to press it, you may not get enough pressure or heat onto the the HTV. So you do want to remember that like with the iron on, if you're doing iron on and rhinestones, you want to make sure that you get that HTV down first, just so that there's enough heat that makes contact with it. Thanks, Marianne. Marianne, send me an email, girl. I think I have your email. I got to check it. I love y'all. Hey, Josie Boo. Happy Tuesday, girl. So... I'm gonna put the put this on. I want to make sure that I have enough space on here for the rhinestones. Like I don't want it to be like I need to make sure that it is gonna be nice and centered. And so I just need to bring it over just a little bit. See how it just looks, it looks plain to me. I don't know why, but it looks very, very plain to me, y'all. It does. All right, so I'm gonna put this, and I think this was a cold peel, if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna turn it over. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's a cold peel, but we'll see. Not the rhinestones, but the glitter. All right, what are y'all talking about? Y'all got any questions? Do you scale and upload to Cricut? It didn't work. It's a demo when uploaded on. Hold on, Miss Dr. Cooper. Dr. Cooper, which one? Which file? Do you scale and upload to Cricut? Um, it might be, let me see if this is cold or hot. No, it's hot. Yo. Oh, that kiss looks so good. So, Dr. Cooper, depending on, I'm not that familiar with uh, Scow, but I do have um, StarCraft Solo um, or Solo Create or something like that. Star Create something like that and did you say when you saved it when you saved the file in scow did you save it as a svg file i 
I know I love it. So you create it in Scal and then you saved it. But is it a Scal file? Did you save it as an SVG? Josie, can you help out in this area? She's gonna be like, girl, I don't know Scal. Yes, you do. You know better than me. All right, so now we're just gonna piece this on top of the, the glitter HTV. And when you're doing rhinestones and HTV, you have to, I gotta remind you guys that, you know, I don't even know where my tough one sheets are. I'm gonna show you guys something. All right, well, wait, when I bring it back over, I'll show you guys, and then I need to press this for a few seconds. It is finished seven. All right, so Dr. Cooper, Josie said, oh, you saved as an SVG. Oh, I don't know. Hey, Miss Crafty Creations. All right, so... Y'all, that is cute. I didn't even think it was cute, but it is actually cute. Hold on, I, got, I can't wait to show y'all. Let me press this one really quick. I just need to do a final, a final press, and then I'm gonna show y'all the rhinestone shirt. And then I'll show you guys a little bit of this. Take that long, but I'm gonna show y'all. It looks so cute, y'all. And so I made this sun. Um, well, I made the SVG file inside of um Adobe Illustrator. Y'all know that's what I use. Um, and then I imported it into silhouette. <laughs> I imported it into Silhouette and then I turned it into an S into a rhinestone file. Let's see. Me too. Why are you so hungry? <laughs> Twinsies, Krista. Twinsies. Eating pizza. All right, let me switch over. Oh goodness. Y'all know how my phone, I have the phone on it. Did somebody try to call me? No. Right, there it goes. Somebody's always trying to call me when I am on. Y'all, look. See, that's so basic, y'all. Y'all sure y'all want that? That's so basic. It's not even anything major. Like, I'm not, like ooing and eyeing over it. It looks very basic, but. So we have our light. Oh, y'all look at, oh my gosh, look how that glows, y'all. Uh-uh, I gotta bring it down closer so y'all can see. So this is the file that we did. And this, these are the, uh, the yellow of the neon elite neon light treasure trove collection. But look how pretty. All right, so I am going to send this and thank you Fabulosis for this idea. So everybody in the member area, make sure y'all tell Fabulosis good looking out because it's because of her that I did this. I was looking through the chat. I do look through the chat and I go back and I read the chat and I remember she said this. So, but I do want to point out to y'all, um, especially for those of you who are just getting into rhinestoning. Hold on, let me go down. Oh, export. <laughs> yep, in Marianne, it was a clothes hanger. Y'all see, I use Bell as a storage. Yep, I do. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, y'all. All right, so for everybody who's just getting into rhinestoning, 
Um, and you want to use like mixed media, meaning you want to use like different ways of uh, doing this, like how this is considered mixed media because we used HTV and we also used the hotfix rhinestones, okay? So with the HTV, the rhinestones, this is glitter, all right? So the glitter, you don't really have to worry about glitter HTV. Usually the rhinestones can stick to glitter HTV, but you want to make sure that you are testing that out. Um, prior to you actually trying to put it onto a shirt or an item that you may want to wear or sell, all right? But with regular HTV, the way that I outlined this, because originally I was not gonna use the glitter HTV, I was going to use a regular uh, HTV, but then I decided to go ahead and use the gold glitter. So I made sure that the K did not touch any of the rhinestones. You don't want those rhinestones because if I were to use a regular a regular HTV, those rhinestones would not stick. It would stick initially, but they will then come off, okay? So I created the outline inside of the sun, so that way the K could fit inside of the sun, and I didn't have to worry about any of those rhinestones touching the K because they would just fall off, and you don't want that. All right. So for anybody who is uh, just starting out and you haven't really tried using uh, rhinestones with HTV or you may consider it because it is, you know, that's cute, like layering it and everything. That's really nice. You just don't want your rhinestones to be placed on top of any uh, HTV, not the hot fix on HTV. Now, you can place your flat back onto HTV with your adhesive, but you can't place hot fix rhinestones on HTV. Now for sublimation, can you place rhinestones on top of sublimation? Yes, you can. You can place rhinestones directly onto sublimation because that ink is really a part of the shirt once you sub it, okay? Um, I do have a video or a live, I think, showing doing uh, sublimation and rhinestones. You can do it. It will last. Um, I should go get the shirt to, to show you guys that shirt. But it will last. So you can do rhinestones and sublimation. And the rhinestones can go directly onto the sublimation because the sublimation, that ink, is becomes one with the shirt. Sublimation and DTF. So the Baby's Booty um, has on her channel, she actually did a uh, DTF and rhinestone shirt. Um, to see if it worked out. Y'all know we like to test around here. So she tested it out and the rhinestones, while it did stick initially onto the DTF, it did not stay, okay? They actually came off. So you want to, you know, if you're gonna be doing DTF, that's a whole, you know, you want the same way like how we do the HTV, you wanna make sure you kind of have your rhinestones, you know, outline it. You'll just have to play around with the rhinestones to make sure, you know, because you want to get as close as possible. So you can, inside of Silhouette Studio, you can, you know, maneuver these rhinestones so that it fits nicely. You see, so that it goes like with that outline perfectly. So you don't have to worry about it touching when you get ready to press. All right. So that's it for our rhinestone shirt. But y'all, look at that bling. I don't even, it doesn't even do it any justice, really. Hold on, I gotta show y'all one more time because where's my where's my light? I gotta get a a, a better light, y'all, because but it like these rhymes and the they do glow. So if you you know, I don't know if you guys can really tell how they glow, but they do glow. They're so cute. All right, so let me switch back over and remove our shirt. But thanks, y'all, so much. Hey, AJ. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Sonia. Welcome. Thank you, Fabulosis. Activate with this. Oh, you have to act. Oh, maybe did they email you a, a serial number, Dr. Cooper? Thank you, Sonia. So that's really what we have planned. Let's go into Adobe Illustrator. I made because I'm thinking with the software, I'm gonna have to do a, hi, Lisette. I'm gonna have to do a um, 
a firmware update. And that's the one thing that I realized, like every time you go to use the machine, you have to make sure that you do a firmware uh, update. So let me, I'm gonna turn the heat press off for now in case we decide to cut. I did wanna show you all that. Um, I think I made, I don't even know where it's at now. What did I do with it, y'all? What did I do with it? And I haven't even tried to cut any um, acrylic. And I'll cut, I'm gonna press these when we get off. I just gotta turn it back on. I was looking for my little acrylic keychain that I got, but. All right, we can test out some of the materials. All right. Why not? I know I said we're going to be on here. We're going to be in and out today. So let's see if we can get something done in like 10 minutes. Question, how do I make my own template for the hotfix rhinestones if I don't have a business edition? Ooh. <laughs> that, Miss Sonia, I don't know. Um, I've been playing around with a, a few things like inside of Cricut and doing... Um, doing a rhinestone templates inside of Cricut if you don't have silhouette, but that just has to deal with like a lot of tiny circles. Um, so that's the only, the only thing. Can it be done? It can be done, but it's just going to take for me, like what I've been exploring, it takes a lot of time. Now, if anybody else has a better way of doing it, please share, um, you know, getting the rhinestone templates without the business edition of Silhouette or without Scal. And for those of you who don't know, Scal is shortcuts a lot. All right. So if you have the StarCraft Solo, you can also um, cut rhinestones with the StarCraft Solo. You can create a template inside of StarCraft Solo, of the StarCraft Create. StarCraft Solo is the machine. Create is the software. All right, so it's pretty much identical to shortcuts a lot. Okay, let me, I'm going to share my screen really quick. Let me, no problem, Miss Sonia. Let me see, let me see. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Let's create a quick uh, cut file. Um, Let's see, we'll, we'll create a quick cut file and I may have to update or do the firmware because I have not used the X tool in a few days. And so you definitely wanna update your fir your firmware um, because if it's not updated, it will not cut. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Let me see, all right. So this was the file that I, Originally, y'all know what? I need to share my whole screen. Hold on, let me stop sharing and share my whole screen. And we're gonna try to do something really, really, really quick. Uh, share. Uh, share, share, share. I need to share my whole screen. I'm so sorry, y'all. This is probably gonna make you dizzy because it's gonna be a lot of different screens. right now. But that's the only way that I can get to show y'all. And then I can't really even go back to the chat. All right. So here we are. This is, uh, we don't need that. The one thing that I don't really like about um, the software for uh, the, I need to try Lightburn for the X tool is that the laser box software measures everything in millimeters. I um, don't. I usually work in inches or pixels at some times, but mostly inches. And so that's the only um, issue, but it's okay. So what should we, what, what should our keychain say? Uh, I don't know. And we can change it into, no, I don't really want to change it into millimeters right now. We'll, I'll show you guys something. So what do we want our keychain to say? The one that I made in the video said mom and then had Taylor's name in the middle. Um, we could do another mom and maybe have it say like mom. And then in the middle, we can say, I love you. Something simple. We're not going to go, you know, reinvent the wheel. 
so let's do mom. I know you guys can't see that. Ooh. What am I doing? All right, so we're going to make this a little bit larger, and I'm just going to open the property. So that's going to be like a four. That size right there, that may not be the size that we stick with, but that's the size that we're going to start, start with. And we're just going to cut a piece of wood. I may try to see about cutting a piece of acrylic, but I don't, um, I don't know because I haven't tried cutting acrylic on here yet, but we might try it y'all. We may see, we may see. All right. So I'll open that in a minute. All right. So we have mom here and let's see what font we want to use. So I'm just going to move this over. And then this way I can kind of scroll down and see what font I want. But I do want a kind of thick font because um, I want the outline. Like it's going to be a keychain. So we do want it to be a little thick, right? I don't really want that font. Sorry, y'all. And for anybody who doesn't know, we are inside of Adobe Illustrator right now. And we are really just turning this into a file that can be cut. Um, with the Glowforge, it's a little different how we create files in the Glowforge because, well, with for Glowforge, because you're actually changing the color of, like, if it's going to be engraved, it's going to be cut, if it's going to be scored. With this one, I don't, there may be a score option on here. I'm just not sure. I haven't used it yet. I've only used cut and engrave. All right, y'all, I'm sorry for talking. All right, that, maybe the American typewriter. I usually only stick with certain uh, bold fonts, but we're going to see. And we're going to use that new font. Well, it's not new. We're going to use that font that I showed in the video for uh, Creative Fabrica, the Samantha Upright font. I like the Chantilly. I like the Chantilly. It may be square. We may do the Chantilly. Cause I don't see any more, y'all. This is the thing with fonts. Fonts are very, very stressful. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I am addicted to fonts, and it's not good. It's not good at all. All right, so uh, I don't really like that one now, but let's turn this into an SVG. This is going to be really quick. We're going to turn this into an SVG, and so to do that, you're going to click Create Outline. And then once you create outline, you want to expand it. And so we're gonna expand the fill and the stroke. And what that means is that that fill and the stroke is going to really, um, you wanna make it one. You're not, you're, you're expanding both items. You're not gonna leave the inside as is or the outside the way, like everything is gonna be expanded together. And so we're gonna click okay. And so as you guys can kind of see here, I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. Uh, so there's about three different blue lines here. So let's say right now, y'all, this is an SVG file. We can send this, uh, save it, and we can send it to the Cricut to be cut. The only thing is, is that at this point, all of these lines will be cut. All right, these all, you, all the lines will be cut. So if I click onto, if I do my double click, I can move that out of the way. And then I can also move that out of the way. And so we don't want that. All right. So if you are, let's say if you take this over and you're like, you know, you just want to cut mom out, you don't want all of those, you know, extra cuts. Then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to the pathfinder and you're going to have to click unite. If you are a little familiar with Adobe Illustrator, pathfinder can be found in the window tab at the top. All right. I keep Pathfinder on my side with my property panel because I use it all the time. All right, so here you can do different things. You can unite it, you can divide, you can do so many different things depending on whatever it is that you're doing. But for the purpose of now, we are going to unite. And so when we click unite, all of those extra cuts leave and this becomes one, all right? So now we are going to, we need to make this a compound path because right now, even though this is together, it's grouped together. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys ever uh, buy SVG files from 
Etsy or places like that. And then when you get it, it's all over the place. They're not together. That's usually because in whatever program that they're creating these files in, it was not turned into a compound path. And a compound path really just means that your, your cutter or whatever machine you're using, whatever it is that you're doing, is going to recognize this as one cut, as one cut. So we're just going to go up here to object, and we are going to click compound path, and we're going to make it a compound path. All right, so right now, this reads as one. As you all see here in Adobe Illustrator, it tells you exactly what it is that you're working with. All right, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. We are now going to make an offset path around this. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just talking. Y'all probably like, girl, what you got me doing? This is too much. <laughs> sorry, y'all. I came back to see what you guys are saying. Okay, good. Y'all not aggravated with me just yet. Hey, Delanda. Enjoy her concert. I hope I see you this week. All right, so... We're not looking at Excel. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna select our mom, and then now we're gonna make a compound path. Not we're gonna make a path, which we're gonna make an offset. So you're gonna go to path, click offset, and then once you click offset, you can adjust the offset around your item, right? And so we're going to increase the offset because I really want to make sure that it is, you know, kind of, you know, not too much, but we can do it kind of like this, right? Mm. Mm. I don't know if I really like that because this part right here is going to be the engraved part, right? So I don't really like the flow of, of everything, to be honest. But let me see what we're going to do. So we're going to leave it like this, right? I'm going to change that color to, let's change it to blue. We're gonna change it to blue. And then I want to maybe shrink this a bit. I don't really like, I don't like the how square it is. I would have preferred if I would have went with the more round font, but that's okay. We're gonna go with it. All right, and I'm just gonna delete like that little hole that was there because we didn't, we don't really need it. All right, so we are going to leave this like this, and then I am going to put on here, let me do, uh-oh, didn't mean to do that. So we're going to, I don't want to do mom. So we are going to click I love you, and I am going to turn that into the Samantha font. Samantha that I used her earlier. Let's see. As y'all see, I love fonts. And then when I get fixated on one font, I just use it all the time. And so I have a Samantha regular and Samantha upright. And I'm going to use the Samantha upright. And then I'm just going to click I. I want a lowercase I. I know that's not correct, but I want a lowercase I and well, first, let me go up to the glyphs and see if I want to change that I. I, I, I. No, I don't like any of the uppercase I's. So let's see if any of the lowercase I's look better. Uh, 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 uh. Not so much, but we are going to go with uh, maybe this one. I know you guys are probably like, girl, we can't see that. All right. So we'll go with that one, that I, and then I'm going to change this U and let me find a U. And right now we're just adding glyphs in from the, um, for this font. Oh, all right, so we're gonna go with this one. All right, so this is the font. So we're gonna have two engraved portions and the mom is gonna be engraved and then the, uh oh, I wanna move this 
over. Oh, now that just throws it off too much. All right, well, we're going to leave it like that. Let me see what size it is. Uh, five by that's still kind of big, y'all. I don't want it to be a five by, not for that. All right, so now we're going to, um, I'm going to expand this out a little bit. Let's turn it into a blue. No, we're going to turn it into pink. It's either pink or blue for me. All right, so I kind of want it to expand through the word mom. And there we go. All right, so now we're going to make this into a um, vector file. And we're just really making it into a shape. And so Adobe Illustrator works in, in shapes. So we're going to do, I expanded it. And now I am going to make sure that I, and uniting is just like welding. So in other programs, if you weld, it's the same thing. All right, and then we are going to make a compound path. All right, and so I'm going to move this out of here for now because I'm going to do, so I could put this on top of here, but y'all, that would look so confusing and you really wouldn't be able to tell. So I'm going to also make another offset around the word I love you but it's not gonna be as big as the one that we use for mom. Where is it at? My offset path didn't come up. See how big? So it, it's just reading the same um, size that mom was. So I'm gonna do a 0 0.05 and that should be good, I think. Let's go 0.05. And so I am going to move that out of the way. Then I'm going to bring this on top. And then this just creates like the offset for me to be able to put in the words um, that I want. And you'll be able to see it. I'm doing all this. I hope that the, um, I hope that it's, I don't have to do too much for the firmware. So we're going to make this a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to, I think both are selected already. So then I'm just going to cut this through. And I usually just use the divide option, but this only works if you have um, both of them as vector files. All right, so I'm just going to delete all of the pink areas. And so that cut it through for me. I'm going to... And then also like the smaller black, you guys probably can't see it. I can see it, but there's like, there were like smaller black uh, specks from when we divided that was still there. And so I'm just gonna delete all of that. There is a way to like remove the front and remove the back um, all here. So it'll say minus merge, intersect, minus, but I just always do uh, divide. That worked a little easier for me. And then I'm actually, if you saw, like I cleared out that one little thing on the side because y'all, you would not believe your machine will pick all of this up. So your machine will pick that up too. Because even though you can't see it, it's still, those lines are still there when you take it into um, any machine. So if you take this into Cricut or whatever, it will still read those lines and you don't want that. So when I highlight this, I'll be able to see it all. So right now I'm gonna just highlight it all together. And uh -oh, there was one part that I missed. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna highlight this all together. We're gonna group it. Oh, it's still grouped, so that's good. All right, and so we're gonna bring it back here. And so, We'll leave it here. I should have made that a lot thicker though. I don't like how boxy it looks, y'all. I don't like it, but it's okay. And then, then we fit the word right here. And so when we get ready to engrave, that's how it's gonna look, all right? So I guess I need to leave it like that because I, I left that 
like that swoosh go so long. So that's what it's going to look like. We still need to put um, a, a hook or a circle. And so to do that, I'm just going to create two circles. And I'm not really measuring. So sorry, y'all. I know. I use my mouse. Somebody's going to say, why don't you use your shortcut keys? Because I always press the wrong thing. <laughs> am I the only person that presses the wrong shortcut keys? Because if I am, that's pathetic. All right, so we're going to make this a little bit smaller. All right, so once I do this, now I'm just going to divide that out. And that took out my little hole. And so we are going to make this smaller and I need to attach this to here. And so I'm just going to put this right here on the side or I could put it right here in the middle. However, maybe in the middle, I think in the middle, but I'm going to put it right there because it's kind of big. That hole looks a little bit big. What size is this? That's too big, but it's okay. This is just for demo purposes. I'm not really pressed. So we're going to select both the circle and we're going to select the mom and then we are going to unite it and then i'm going to turn it back blue and turn it to the back okay turn it to the back this way too all right so now we have a little keychain that we're going to cut nothing this is not anything measured perfectly y'all so now i'm going to save this i'm going to group all this together and then I am going to save it or export it. I'm going to export it. And we're going to export it as Xtool Live. And then hopefully we will see, uh oh, it's about to save as a PNG, save as SVG. Export to layers, everything. Okay. All right. So I'm going to click onto this and let me. So right now it's showing as a six. Oh, that's too big, y'all. That's going to be a big keychain. <laughs> did not intend for it to be that big but guess what we're gonna go with it because i'm not changing it right now all right so we can change the um the measurements or we can change the units that we use but uh, let's let's see mm, no we'll leave it I'm not really, we'll figure it out. Let's go. All right, let's go into X tool. Hold on, let me come back over here to y'all and see what y'all talking about. All right, y'all, are y'all, are y'all, did I confuse y'all? <laughs> did I, hey, Miss Barbara Bonaparte, welcome. Did I confuse y'all? Did I, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. So we are going to, I think this is big enough for, for this. I don't know y'all. This. So let me show y'all this stuff. Hold on. Uh, add to stream. So these materials came, well, it was a part of the uh, thing that they had and it came with the, the package. And so we're going to see and I don't even know where my file is. Like they gave me a folder to tell me like what temperature and everything to press this stuff on. And I don't know where it's at. So we're going to see. Hey, Keisha, thank you. Well, hey, James, what file format do you save it as if you use it for engraving? So in the system, I'm going to show you guys. So in when you go into the laser box, and let me open the laser box. The laser box is very, very uh, basic. That's the software for um, the X tool. It's called LaserBox. And let me turn the machine on so that I can um, update the firmware while we look at it. And don't let me cut my table today. I'm waiting on the honeycomb. They're, they're gonna send me the honeycomb tray um to go underneath 
because if you didn't see, I kind of like cut my table the other day when I was doing it. So let's see, let's see. So Martin, that was going to be for a keychain, but the, this keychain is going to be super, super big. So I don't know. It's more like a paddle at this point. It's not even like a keychain. It's because it's going to be very, very long. But yeah, I didn't want to like be so indecisive and not decide and everything. So let me open up the laser box software and I'm going to show you guys that. Um, let me share my screen again. Uh-oh. Uh, let me share. Uh, I did show y'all that. Yeah, I did. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Share. Let's see. Window, 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 window. And I actually want it a little bit smaller because the bigger it is, y'all know that's the, the more time it takes. All right, so this is the software. Like I told y'all, it's very, very basic. It's really a import and cut. For me, that's what it is. All right, so we are going to import the file. So these are, let me check for firmware though. Hold on. Now I got to make sure my machine is connected. Here it is. It's on the network. Um, you can also connect it via USB. So if your Wi-Fi is out, or if you are using this, maybe, you know, because you can really you, you can really take this other places. You don't have to have Wi-Fi. All right. So that's a whole that's a plus. So we're gonna click on to the laser box. And then I'm gonna check for firmware. So I mean let me check for updates and then okay, so the latest version is already installed. I don't know if you guys can see that. Check for firmware. I don't know if you guys see me checking for firmware, but I'm checking for firmware because, uh oh. So it this part is telling me that I have to connect the computer to a USB. I cannot connect my computer to a USB. So we're gonna see if it is still up to date. But I can tell y'all that it is always, every time I use it, I usually have to change the firmware. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> Martin's like, use it as an ornament. Keisha said she loves big keychains. <laughs> Marilyn, oh, I love y'all. All right, so let me go into, back into the laser box. But it's, can you guys see when I pull the drop down? Let me see. I can't tell. Okay, you, got, you can't see them. Why can't you see? You can't see when I, I'm an illustrator. So it's very, very basic, y'all. It's nothing major. Um these are all of the options that you have but you adjust uh your engrave and cut settings over here on the right side in this software so this is this is super basic you can with this uh laser you can use the light burn software so i just chose the beginner friendly software to to try out first all right so let me import we're going to import the file, and I think this, that's it. Uh, the, do you want to scale it? Yes. We're going to scale it. At this point, it's all good. The canvas size right here, this is, and I guess you can change it. Um, You should be able to change it, but I don't know. All right, so this is how it comes over. So I can kind of make it smaller, y'all. And I think I'm gonna make it, as you see, like this particular software, it measures in millimeters. All right. No, I don't wanna cut that. All right, so you can click onto, so that back part, I just clicked onto the back part and it says that this is for engraved, but that back part is really gonna be for cut. So you would use, you would click cut here. Now for material, you, these are their default materials, but I really need to find that paper that had all of the instructions um, for the material that they sent me because I don't think this is the default uh, material. Like they had some other material that they sent me that I could use, you know, and use those settings for it, but I don't necessarily think that that's for 
this but we'll we'll fix that later so you click on to default well, not default you click on to cut because that's going to be cut so the cut turns purple kind of similar to how glowforge does with uh cut being red and then i think engraving cut is red engraving is blue so this is going to just cut the wood out in that shape for me in the back and then we're going to select i need to make it a little bit bigger because even though like i made that a compound path inside of adobe illustrator it still came over as um i don't know if you guys can see that it still came over as individual files or individual objects and so i'm going to click onto everything that i want to engrave like all of this i want to engrave all of that so that's going to be all done like even the word love like i want all of this to be engraved but i need to see it because i can't really tell and i guess somebody told me that light burn is a lot better but i don't know we'll see so we clicked on to engrave the orange means engrave and so i'm gonna fill it because i want it to be a filled engrave right i don't want it to be an outline and so that's set for engrave but i need to click on to the rest of this stuff to click to make sure that that's going to be engraved too i gotta make this bigger because i can't see y'all i can't see so we're going to make it bigger because i can't see that little stuff and i know if i can't see it y'all can't see it because your screen is probably a lot smaller than mine um so we are going to click on to select the select i can't still can't, why can't i get this y'all no i don't want that i still can't get the okay there we go so we're gonna click fill and then i still need to fill that i still need to fill that so it, i must not have turned that other one the word mom into a compound path i must not have because as y'all saw i love you was one um all i had to do was select one part of i love you so that meant that it was in a compound path so i must not have because if not then each word for i love you would have been separate so it must have been a step that I missed. So let me click that. And right now I'm just filling in um, the engrave. All right, so let me click here. I'm gonna do fill. And you can select multiple uh, pieces at a time. All right, you can. All right, so this looks like this is good. This looks like this is good. Um, we have our cut file or our cut cut part. We have our engraved part. And yep, yeah, so this is pretty much all set. Now I'm gonna, wait, hold on. I need to change this up. So this is where you're gonna change everything. So y'all, I put everything at max power, max speed, but that's not really correct to do. So let me see if I can find my sheet for, um, for the items. Did I put it in here? I don't think I did. Oh. Where did I put it, y'all? Uh -oh. Is this it? Nope. I have the stickers, but I must have put the other part someplace else. And I need to check that from here. Alright, so I don't think, where's my, oh, I got to put my glasses on. All right, so that's pretty much set. And we have the, I think this is the pine because one is cherry. Did they send rubber too? Oh, they did send a rubber mat. Y'all, I didn't even, we would have cut some rubber tonight. All right, let me see. So one is cherry and one is pine wood. And so I didn't realize that I had rubber, a rubber mat too. 
Okay, I think this is the pine wood. The pine wood is lighter than the cherry wood. So we're going to cut the pine wood tonight. Maybe on Thursday, if we get to this laser, we can do it. So I'm going to show you guys this. Hold on. Let me show y'all. Uh -oh. I'm going to stop screening for now. And then I'm going to show you guys that. Hold on. I, if you guys have any questions, is this a web-based program or do you download and install? You download and install. It's not web-based. It's not web-based, so you can use it um, without without Wi-Fi. You can use it without Wi-Fi. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right, so this is, this is the wood that they sent that came in the box. And I know I was just talking about that rubber, the rubber piece. And... Y'all, I can't wait. I want to make a stamp. I have other rubber that I wanted to make a stamp with the Glowforge. So maybe I should do like a comparison of that and the Glowforge, of the X12 and the Glowforge to see how it cuts. But this was the wood that they sent to me just to try it out. Um, this is pine wood. And they're telling me the when they send you their um, material. So they do have a machine similar to the Glowforge. And it also comes with, you guys know how the Glowforge has the QR code. They also have material like that, but not for this particular machine. Though that's for their CO2 laser, right? But they do send you um, like a brochure with some of their materials and what you should um, set your power and speed to. And so they have it for the different uh, products that they have. So they have the five watt, the 10 watt and or the laser box. And y'all, they also now have a 20 watt laser box. All right, so let's see. I'm going to go back into the screen, and then we are going to, let's see, the material. Um, Uh-oh. Why is it not working now? Did I do something wrong? No. Engrave. What did I do, y'all? I don't want to start yet. Okay, there we go. I don't know. Oh, okay. So for each part, you have to change, you have to select it. All right. So we're going to do default. Um, this isn't fast wood, it's plywood. And so let's set the power at, let's do fast wood, right? I don't know. It doesn't tell me that. But clearly, I guess it can go pretty, you know, thicker. I thought it, it, it only did 3 mm, but we're going to do power at. 80%, that's what it's telling me, power at 80%. And when I cut through my table, y'all, I had like full power for whatever it was that I was using. And then for speed, it's telling me 100 mm, okay. And it doesn't take me to 100, maybe because it is on the basswood setting, I don't know. Oh, that's for the cut. Okay, so you got to be careful. So for the cut, they give you two, they give you different settings for either engrave or cut. So I was looking at the engraving. So for the cut, we want to go at four, at four, I guess four millimeters per second. And then the power, the power is going to be at 100. And then one, one pass. So the 10 watt only requires one pass. All right, so that's set for the cut. And then now let's go to the engrave. And so I guess when I was changing everything to engrave, I should have just been um, selecting everything, right? Already, and I should have grouped all that stuff together when I had it, when I had the chance. Hold on, let me see this. Let me see if I can group it together. No, you can't. I was just trying to see because this you it's this is not so if you're looking at this program, this is not a design software. This is really not a design software. This is a you know, you're just gonna upload your stuff in. At least I would. They do have options for you to like insert uh, circles and rectangles and fonts and things like that. And it does pull up your system fonts, but it's very limited. That's all you're really going to be able to do. You can't really do much you know nothing major in here all right so 
for engrave i'm just going to select engrave and i'm hoping and praying that it will um what you call it no i didn't mean to select the cut oh goodness y'all i can't let's see if this engrave let's see if it does it for all of it for me so engraving, we are going to engrave this at 80%. And so we're just going to slide our slider over to 80%. The speed is going to be um, 100 millimeters per second. And, of course, just one pass. All right, so... Let me see if that applied for, no, it does not apply. So as y'all see, it did not apply for all of the items that we want to engrave. So what I should have did before I imported, I should have just made all of this, like the mom, I love you. I should have just made all of that a compound path and that I did not do. So I should have made all of that a compound path because right now that is the problem. But even though the mom is, that, that did it. So why didn't that one? I don't know. I guess this, it looks like maybe it takes time because at first it wasn't reading. Um, no, but it's reading it at 50%. All right. So I want it at 100. Power at 100%. Oh, no, at 80%. So we're going to do 80%. And of course, depending on what, once you get comfortable with your machine, you can adjust it based off of what you like. I'm still using what they recommend. But of course, adjusting like the power and the speed will change like the color or how dark uh, the engraved looks or how light it looks. In case you didn't know that. All right, so we're gonna go with 80. And then I'm gonna go 100. And then hopefully I don't have to do a firmware because if I have to do a firmware, y'all, I'm gonna have to undo the computer because it won't um what you call it all right so we're gonna select and there's some little parts i don't know if you guys remember those little parts that i had that i did not um what to call it 80 percent and then 100 all right and so that is all set and you can turn, you can flip it, you can do different things like that here, but it's very basic, y'all. It's nothing major. So if you're looking at this and you're saying, you know, well, you know, you can't really do much in this software, you can't. But in Lightburn, does anybody have experience in the Lightburn software where you can give us a little insight? I am going to download it um, eventually, not now. I got a lot of other programs that I'm trying to figure out. So it's not really on the top of my list, but I do want to try it. Uh oh. We're going to do 100. And then I'm just filling in all of those little extras that you can't. You guys are so patient. And I was supposed to be off of here 10 minutes ago. Why nobody stopped me from doing this? 80. 100. All right, so let's see if we can go ahead and get this started. And if I click start, um, let's see. All right, so let's make sure that it reads it. I'm going to get a board to go underneath. All right, so this is what it looks. Oh, no, we can't do that, y'all. That's too long. I did too much. <laughs> that, is, that is too much, y'all. Uh -uh. <laughs> that will not be happening today. Hold on. Let me cancel this real quick. Let me make this a lot smaller, too. Let's see. Maybe if we make it smaller, it won't take that long because, whoa, y'all, I I'm already I've, I'm already past my time frame. Hold on. We're going to make it a little tiny, right? And let's see how long this takes. Oh, I got meetings in the morning. 
Okay, so I could I could go at 17 minutes. Now it's gonna be small, so that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna put hold on. All right. So when I start to frame it, it's gonna tell me whether or not um uh -oh. when I start to frame it, it's gonna tell me whether or not I need to do the what you call it. I'm trying to see if you guys can see it. I don't want so with the light with this laser, y'all, it has like like different lights, and I don't want you guys to be like thrown off, okay, with the light. So just know that if you can't take the lights, I will turn it off. I put it on my list for this week. I need it for my new laser to test this week. Oh, you gotta let me know. Is laser box different from yes, Miss Miss Barbara is very different from um it's very different from the Glowforge uh, app. There's a few things about about it that's different, but the Glowforge you can do a little bit more in their app. So that's why I want to test out the light burn. <laughs> Damn, two extra. All right, y'all, <laughs> two extra. All right, so you can't really see it that good. I don't really want to put the computer on top. Yes. I'm putting on all this stuff, y'all. Sorry. I'd be reckless too much. All right, so let me go into. I gotta go back, and hopefully, hopefully it's fine. So we're gonna do a frame. Let me put this. Let me get a piece of wood. Um, you can move the. Hold on, I'm going to switch this off because right now that's just going to show you. So you can actually move the um, the laser to position it how you want it to be. So right now I put the wood inside. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I put the wood inside. <laughs> Let me get another piece of wood to go underneath. Where's AJ? Because AJ needs to know that I'm going to put another piece of wood underneath here. Honey. All right. So they are sending me a honeycomb tray. So inside of the Glowforge, there is a tray, like the honeycomb tray. And so they do have a honeycomb tray that comes with this machine. It is extra. And so they are going to send me the honeycomb tray to go, you know, so that I'm not cutting up my desk and stuff. But I'm just putting an extra piece of wood underneath. And then right now, I'm just positioning the, the board. All right? So you can move your laser. This is how you move your laser so that you position it, which is a lot different from Bell because with the Glowforge, everything is electronic. You control everything from the app. All right, let's see, let's see. All right, y'all, I'm going back into, and so I'm gonna click framing and hopefully I don't have to update it. All right, so as you guys saw, I don't know if you guys saw, but the, the uh, X tool was framing the, where, the cut. And so if I were paying attention good, I could know exactly where I want it to end and stop. But I do know that I don't want to waste the center of my board. So I'm just going to slide it up here. And I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like a, um, you probably can't see. So there's like a crossbow. And you just kind of, you know, you know where that center is. So right now I know that it's going to cut where it's going to start. That is my starting point. And so I know that this board is large enough for the item that we're going to be, be cutting. All right. So now I can click start. And then I'll be over here to talk to y'all. Look at my hair, y'all. It's a hot mess. Oof. Okay. So let's click start. And let's hope it goes good because I did not up do the firmware update. Okay, 
can automatically set. Hold on, it's telling me progress. All right, so it's telling me not to disconnect, but let me get my cord just in case I have to take you guys off and we're just gonna go from the from the um from the phone. Because it's not too long, but it should have started already. Just so I don't know if you guys can see the screen. So right now the screen is still telling me. Uh oh. So this is what the screen is telling me. Oh, James, you're right. I do have to adjust the height. James, James, you're so right. Hold on. Thank you for being here, James. Did you turn off the deep press? Yeah, I did, Sean. I turned it off. Hold on. So let me cancel. So James reminded me that I have to adjust the. Okay, so right now it's really, really high because I was using the. Hold on. All right. So I'm still going to have to take this off. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to put the computer screen as a big screen. I'm going to remove me. All right, can you guys hear me now? Hopefully there's no echo. Hopefully there's no echo. So right now I'm just updating the firmware. And so to update the firmware, you do need to be connected to, so there's a new version of the firmware. It doesn't take long to download it, y'all. I'm still here. Hey, y'all. Thanks, y'all. I was talking away, but thanks, James, so much. James is absolutely correct. So with this uh, machine, you have to adjust. Uh-oh, y'all, my stuff is just falling out. Because I don't have it on right. Don't have it on right. Oh, one more question, y'all. This is too much stuff on. So you have to adjust your um, laser. And so the last time I used this laser, I used it with the rotary um, attachment. All right, so it's good. Now we're gonna go back to start. And so to adjust it, this comes down, but this is gonna be down to like, to adjust, I don't know if you guys can really see that. Hold on, let me go up here. Let me start showing. All right, so to adjust it, you have to pull this down, right? But this is going to be too high up. Watch, let me show you guys. So you loosen it up. And so because I was using the rotary, I needed it to be this high. But I don't need it to be this high now because I'm not using the rotary. 
So I'm gonna have to adjust. Hold on, I gotta take this off now, y'all, because I can't. I can't even think with that thing on my head. Whew. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and undo the risers just to bring it down because in order to adjust it, it needs to touch. All right, so y'all are gonna see how you adjust this. And I may need to take off both, but I just wanna, I'm gonna see if taking off one of the risers will, will do the trick for us. So these are the risers that comes with it. So this is how you are able to engrave onto taller objects. That's one thing that you cannot do with the blowforge. You are limited to a two inch high um, item. But here you can engrave, not necessarily cut because it's, it's probably not going to cut through, you know, the item because it's too thick, but you can definitely engrave on top of it, all right? So that's one way it's different from, from Bell. Uh oh, it's taking away too much. Okay. Okay. And the risers come with the it comes with the uh, machine. So you don't have to worry about that. The risers actually come with the machine. All right, so, uh-oh, is it still too high? It looks like it's still too high, y'all. I'm not, I, I gotta take the bottom ones off again. I should've just took them both off. Because it's so flat. But this is why you're able to, to do it, like use a rotary attachment with it. The, the structure of the machine is actually very, very smart um, because you're able to do so many different things with it. It's just, it's a manual machine. It's not like the Glowforge where, you know, you pop in your material and that's it. It's pretty stationary. This is not but you can actually put this up. You can put it on top of some place. You can store it, put it in the closet. If you like to, you can even take it apart because it's not, it's really not difficult. Once you, you know, know how to put it together, it's not bad at all. So I hope the lights, remember this is a laser. So if those lights are too much. I, I have on these glasses. So it's not really going to affect me like that. But I definitely don't want it to affect any of you guys. All right, so, and while it's, oh, I'm gonna probably leave it on. All right, why is it uneven now? It's on something, oh, that's why. It's this part that's uneven. Okay. No, I don't want it. Hold on, y'all. I need to bring it back up. I don't have it too tight. Uh, and this is how you kind of adjust it. Like it goes up. And so now. And so once you have it down and once you place it down, this is how you'll know like where to or how, you know, it should be because it's supposed to touch the top of your material like this. And once it touches the top of your material, you there's a lever on the side, you guys can't really see it, that, let's see, now I need to bring this, I need to bring it up. So the lever on the side, once it's up, and you kind of pop it up and then it's like a very tiny space between the bottom of the laser and the material. Then you tighten it back up. 
And then once you tighten it back up, you just bring that lever back up too. And so now it's ready. And again, James, thanks for the look out because I completely forgot that step. All right, so right now I have it. And so we're going to go back into the program. And then we're going to frame it. I don't know if you guys could see it. I'm, I want you guys to see this part. So I'm going to remove it from the, or remove, remove this. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to click framing. And so if you look at the machine, you'll see that it's going to start moving. And then it outlines exactly where your, your cut or your engraving is going to occur. Okay. So right now it's time for us to start. It should work fine now because, um, I should work fine now. I do want to take my computer back off just in case y'all can't, um, take the, I'm going to take it off. Hold on, in case you guys can't take the lights. Hold on. I may have to put it back on. Hold on. I should have just went ahead with it and just sat here with y'all. Yep, looks like I'm just sit here with y'all. I'll stay here and sit with y'all so this is done. And then we'll talk from here. Because every time I do that, like once I update the firmware, I usually have to go out of the program and then go back in. And I don't want to have to do that. All right, so the framing is fine. Nothing was adjusted or moved. So we're going to get ready to start. And so now it's adjusting. If that light is bothering any of you, please let me know. And I'm still reading the comments, y'all. Say, Christine, it's not, it's honestly, it's not really that complicated. It's really not. I just forgot because I got to get used to the steps. I just got to remember the different steps that we have to go for. But it's really not that complicated. It's not that many steps. The only thing that you'll realize is that you have to keep doing, updating the firmware, which I kind of figured because I didn't use it in about three days. And so the firmware needed to be updated before I could use it. But it's not complicated at all. Hey, D. Smith, welcome. Hey, Tampa. James, I could. I was going to take it out. I was actually going to take it, I was actually going to take it out, um, to do it, but then I came from home. But I was. And I really came from mine because I had stuff on top of the road bridge and I was just being lazy. Right now I just have another board underneath. So it's in great. I don't even know if you guys can even see that. Let me see this. You can kind of see a little bit, but not. I really don't want the light to bother anybody. Hold on, let me see. If the light bothers you, please leave a comment and I will stop showing. But so far, this is what. So it's really engraving um, the wood. So in break, I love you very, very quickly. But if that light is bothering you, let me know. Mm. 
<laughs> Kimba, you're a hot mess. Hey, Tawanda. <laughs> but it goes, it's, it's actually moving pretty quickly, y'all. The engraving part, even with the glow forts, the engraving part is um, the part that usually takes the longest. Cutting is super, super quick. It's the engraving that takes the longest. So that's it. And again, like I said, it depends on your power and your speed, uh, the color of your uh, engraving. But I don't want to like have that light on y'all too much because I don't want it to like trigger y'all. I'm scrolling down to see what I miss. Hey, Lisa. Yeah, so I had a rotary attachment came with it, Lisa. Um, let me show you. But the rotary attachment actually came with it, but um, they have a new rotary attachment that's like an upgrade um, that they're launching tomorrow. I put a I put a video on Facebook about it, and so. I really want to get that one, but I do have the rotary tool, the rotary attachment. I'll show you. Thanks, Nancy Boo. I didn't even see you say it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't engrave in color. What you could do this is you can paint the wood, kind of like the Glowforge too. Um, you have to like uh, paint the wood. You can pre-paint it. And then it'll engrave, or if you want to engrave, like let's say you want the word mom or whatever to be in color, then you uh, just paint the inside. You can put a masking. But as you guys see, anybody who has a bow for it, y'all know that we usually put like a whole bunch of masking because of the charring that happens. But this doesn't even have that much. I don't even see any charring on it right now. So, but you still can put the masking on it, but there's no charring. Yeah, but when when you paint it, it's so pretty. Like when you paint it and then you you engrave, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. I prefer to paint before uh, engraving instead of engraving and then painting. Yeah, I really like this thing. It's so easy to use. Show you guys. Well, no, you can't really see it, but it looks amazing, y'all. So you have to be in a ventilated area because it will, like, you could be in your garage or, like, you want to have your windows open because it does, like, it's smoke. But right now, honestly, it's not even that smoky. I would take my glasses off, but I don't want to take them off. Well, I should not take them off. You have to make sure that you are, are very well protected using this. But it looks good. That's, this is a quick 17 minutes, y'all. It's really a quick 17 minutes. And so I've seen some people with this machine, they build, um, they build a box around it. So I definitely want to um, build one of those. I said in another night that I was going to um, work on building one because I really do like this uh, this laser. Like I told you earlier, I, when I got it, I did not have any intentions on keeping it. And then when I used it, I even had told my friend before, like I even opened the box. I'm like, I don't have any room for this thing. Like I, I know I'm not going to want it. I already have my goal for it. You can have it. And now I'm like, I want it. <laughs> I, I like it, especially with that rotary attachment. That rotary attachment for me, like, really sealed the deal. Yes, Miss Melinda, I still have the discount. Um, it's the discount code is for this particular one, the ten watt, um, one, not the five watt one, but I do have the discount code 
I didn't put it in this video because I really didn't have much intentions on using it tonight. Um, but I'll put it in in a few minutes. Oh yeah, these all the go. Yeah, it does. It does. That's why. Yeah, probably because it's it's a little more powerful. But when you guys see this complete, you'll be like, okay. Especially for those of you who have a Glowforge, you're gonna say your Glowforge does this, and it it doesn't look any different. It really doesn't. I didn't even put masking on this, y'all. No masking. So now it's just doing a few little other things and then it's going to cut around. So now it's cutting. This is where most of that smoke comes from. Like this is where the smoke so the engraving doesn't really do much, but the cutting, that's where now you, I can even see through my glasses, you see a little more of the smoke, but the engraving, not so much. And it could be I had too much power on it. I don't know. But that is, yeah, that's the part. That's the one that's causing. I see a lot more smoke with the cutting. Of course, the cutting part is a little more powerful. But I definitely should have had um, masking for the cutting. It is almost done. Almost done. I want that light to bother y'all. Let me back it up a little bit. And I hope I'm not making y'all dizzy. I might have had the power too much though, y'all. All right, so we're all done with the cut. And we're going to look at it. Hold on. So that cut, yeah. You saw it, Lisa? Way more. All right, so it's all done. Hold on, let me. All right, close. I'm going to close out of the program, and then we'll look at it. So this cut through. And I just saw my cut, that cut, the power was probably way too much for, for this. That's probably why it the extra smoke. Because look, it cut through the, well, it didn't cut through it, but it kind of like scored the, it's not cut through. It's, it didn't cut through the, the wood, but it did. And I could see the paper. I'm thinking about masking. Like this just doesn't do well with masking. Like you shouldn't use masking with it. I don't know. All right, but this is the this is how it came out. And then I just gotta kind of try to just knock it out. I guess. Hold on, y'all. I kinda so I only have I only have one hand that can work. So we're probably, I'm gonna take you guys back over to the table. But this is what we have, and I'll show you guys at the table. Hold on a second, y'all. Let me turn this off, and then I'm going to add this one back to the screen. I'm going to remove that one, and then hold on, y'all. Uh-oh. Oh, it popped out. Oh, I'm back, y'all. Looking a hot mess. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. I'm looking a hot mess. Hotmess.com. For real. All right, let me turn the speaker back off. I don't want to shock y'all. And then 
we'll look at the what you call it together so that y'all can see it up close a little bit better But that really didn't take that long. Like once it actually started, like it didn't take that long. So that first cut was going to be super, super big, y'all. So I'm glad that we reduced the size. Ooh, the hair. Hey, crafting away. All right. So here's what we have. Once I lifted it up, it the uh, little hole popped out. All right, so this is the cut. The cut is very, very clean. I don't know if you guys can really, really tell. I may want to show it on my actual computer, but the cut is very clean. That back part, I think it's the masking that causes this because it doesn't it didn't happen on the front very little, but that masking, I think, is probably not good for, uh, for that or that type of masking. And the glow forge it works fine but i don't think it's good but it actually came out really really good you can also change remember i said about that engraving if i adjust that power like you clean it off like you clean off the shavings here but if i adjust the power i can make that darker i could make it lighter i could do so many different uh things with that this looks like this is about one fourth it looks like it's a no, it's, it may not be one fourth. Hold on, let me see how big this is. It's a little bit. I think it's one eighth. It should be one eighth, I think. Don't make me lie. I do have a little tool to tell me, but I don't know. But it's pretty thick. I think it's one eighth. It's not a quarter. It's definitely not a quarter. It's probably one eighth. But it looks good. It's not one sixteenth. It's, yeah, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Don't make me laugh. I'll look. I'll look and see. <laughs> but look, y'all. And then it does the I love you. Everything looks pretty good. I'm very happy with it. The other one I did the other day, I did max power. And I think if I were to do another one like this, I would do max power because the um, engraved area was a lot darker. But for the most part looks pretty decent it looks pretty decent does the one you have come with the air the air assist nozzle is additional james that one's i think that one's additional that one this one did not come with it it didn't come with it but i'm very i i like it i mean i don't i like the the cut to be quite honest i don't like the design <laughs> But I do like the cut. Like I like the the you know the way that it looks. Also with acrylic, maybe on Thursday, um, if we bring out the laser again, maybe we'll try to do it with acrylic and see how it does with acrylic because I have not uh, cut any acrylic with it yet. So I do want to try that out and see how that goes. But that's it. This was the other material that came in the material box. These uh, cubes, these pine cubes, uh, these cylinders, and that's to go in the rotary. These um, silicone rings, which I can't wait. Like, I want to engrave something on these, but these silicone rings. And I'm so used to, honestly, like, I'm so used to working in inches that in the laser box, it only works in millimeters. And so that's, y'all you know, get frustrated really easily for stuff like that, but... I'm going to have to figure it out or just work it through converting inches or inches into millimeters because I only designed in inches in Illustrator. And so it came with like this necklace and then it also has like this little round pendant on it. So this is just like a box. Like if you ordered it, if you ordered this machine like now, I think this box is like a free gift or so that comes with it. But then they have like these colorful metal business cards. And they're in different colors. So maybe one night we'll just play around with different uh, materials when we have more time. And we'll play around with uh, some of the other materials so that you guys can kind of see like how it engraves on everything. But use 
Use the Google converter. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. It does stainless steel. That's that that tumbler that I did. If you saw the video, the tumbler that I did was stainless steel. Um, and I used the rotary attachment with it. That's the really that's why I really, really like this. Um, but these are like dog tags. I don't have a dog, y'all. So if y'all have a dog and y'all want your dog's name on one of these, let me know. I'll put it on there because I don't, you know, I don't have any pets. So I can definitely put a name on it. We maybe one night we could do that and put it on there. And then came with these wood posters. So yeah. The cards are cute. Thanks, y'all. So James, honestly, if I could find my very first cut with this, and that was the reason why I did not give it away. Um and I don't even know where I put it. I don't even know what I did with it. It's somewhere. It has to be here. But y'all y'all know everything looks so mess here. Um, the cut, the cut is very clean. Very, 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 like, it's, like the Goldforge, um, it's pretty much the same, the cut. The cut is the same. The engraving also, um, for me, it's just a matter of learning uh, the power and the speed of the Tim Watt, the machine, and what to adjust it to. It did come with instructions on how to set it, but um, I don't know. That's up to you. That's really up to you and what you're, you know, so that's the only thing. But honestly, it's nice and clean and crisp. It's very, very, very clean. Um, I, I can't. If I would have did this with my Glowforge um, with similar settings, it would have been charred. Like not charred burnt, but I would have had, like you have to use the masking with the Glowforge. And for this, I don't know, for those of you who have Glowforge, y'all saw that I didn't use any type of masking on top. The masking that caused this was actually on the piece of Glowforge proof, proof grade uh, material that I had. And that caused that. So that, you know, I'm starting to think that the masking for this isn't something that's really recommended, but I am very, very impressed with, especially for this to be at the price point that it's at. I'm very impressed. The cuts are very, very clean. The power for this cut was too much. Um, but other than that, it's very, very, very clean. Like it's very clean, very sharp. Yeah. That I'm impressed with. Um, the engraving for this one, my first one, I had better engraving. So I'm thinking maybe it's something that I did wrong because with the first one that I engraved, I used the, um, the default settings in the program in the laser box program. So I didn't have to adjust any of the settings for any of the, the items because you know, when I give you the test material, it's all there. Um, but this wasn't one of the test materials. So I had to, like, I looked at this and then but I guess more testing. I'll be able to get an engrave that I love. But for the most part, the engrave, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't, it doesn't look bad at all. It's just this part. I don't know if that's just like extra of the shavings. The only thing, the one thing that I didn't like with it is that it didn't come with the crumb tray, even though you can order it a separate, you know. Um for a beginner, I think that that's important for them to know that they need something underneath um, the laser and the material because, you know, these lasers are powerful and people who are just starting out looking into lasers and getting into lasers, lasers, they may not know, you know, they're dangerous. They really are. And so I think that they could do, you know, a little bit better with, with that. But other than that, I mean, it, with it being so open, um, that's a whole nother thing that I don't really like because you want to make sure you're in a ventilated area. So you have your windows, you need to have your windows open. Um, you need to have protection. If you do it outside in a garage or something like that, or on your patio, you would, you know, that's perfect ventilation. So let's see. Snowflake does. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Snowflake has... Snowflake has a, 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 a dog tag. <laughs> Wait, do I see more names here? Pebbles and Castile? Got you. I got you. 
because I I don't I need to do one and I'm gonna do so maybe one one live I'll do it with y'all with y'all booze on here and just engrave some names. But it's very very impressive, y'all. It it really really is. Um, like I said before, I did not think that I was gonna be interested in. It. I did not think that I was gonna like it, and um, when I used it. <laughs> And then that rotary, I realized, like, girl, you really like this thing. Like, you can really use this for something. And think about it, y'all. Everybody doesn't like sublimated tumblers. Everybody doesn't like, you know, it depends. Some people like um, stainless steel engraved tumblers. They do. There's a whole market for them. So I was like, just for that, like, I have to keep it. Let me show y'all the rotary attachment. And this is the rotary attachment. So... You saw where there is there is a part on the machine on the laser where you just uh -oh, I'm gonna make this up a little bit higher so you guys can see. Sorry about the messy dust, y'all, but y'all know I had a few things going on. So this is the rotary attachment, and so all you really do is you plug in the cable, and that same laser that cut this um, wood. That's going to be the same laser that engraves your stainless steel tumblers, your acrylic, and that sort of thing. Anything round, you can put your ceramic. I think it does the ceramic too. I'm going to try some ceramic and let y'all know. It may not. I'm going to test out a few different um, items in it. And then that way I'll know for certain. They do have a list on their website of all of the materials that you can cut, engrave, and everything. So don't worry about that. I'm just too lazy to go on the website and look. Maybe I should. I'm going to go look because I don't know. <sighs> Lasers are, are, are very, very um, serious, y'all. <laughs> do not take them lightly. So this is all you really do. You really just plug this into the, the machine. And on, on one of those rails is like the motherboard. And there's a slot for that. And you can take it out and put it back in. And you really just put it there. You rise. That's why I had it so high before, because with the machine here and then the tumbler on top, you have to rise it so that it can, you know, the that laser can sit on top and then you can adjust it. That's why I'm so thankful that James reminded me that it needed to be, you know, it, the height needed to be adjusted. It was way too high for the material that we were going to be cutting. All right. So, yeah. But this is the rotary attachment. They do have a new rotary attachment. I put it up on, it It should be in the community on, on here. Also, I put a picture or a video of it on uh, Facebook in the Facebook group uh, so that you guys could see it. If you're interested in it, X Tools will be going live tomorrow night um, to show it. So I can't believe that I really like this. Honestly, you know, I cannot believe that I really like this. I can't. So but this is the rotary laser. Um, or the rotary attachment. That's the rotary attachment that comes with this. The attach that attachment comes with the machine. The one that they're going to be showing um, tomorrow. That's an upgrade. All right, that's an upgrade. Trudy says, if I miss any of your comments earlier, I'm so sorry, y'all. Um, I'm usually a hot mess. By this time in the in the live, I'm usually a little bit on track, and I can kind of see some of the comments. But I was just, I'm sorry, y'all, if I if I miss your comments. So, Tree said you have less smoke when you add the air assist. It helps in reducing the smoking and offer a cleaner cut. However, you just have to shop for one, like I, for one, I do like it. Okay, okay, thank you, Trudy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And it's always good to have you here. I appreciate that so much. But y'all, y'all know at 7 o'clock or 7.10, because I was late, I was like, I'm not staying on here um, for an hour. An hour, we're done. And guess what? We are past <laughs> that hour. We are way past that hour. <sighs> but it is time well spent. I won't be here on Friday. 
Um, it is Good Friday, and I won't be coming on on Sunday to talk about DTF, but I may come on on Thursday um, to see what, what y'all got going on. But that's it. If you were not here earlier, we did this rhinestone shirt. And I don't know why y'all want this, but it's, I guess, it, I don't know, it's not that cute to me. But we did this rhinestone shirt um, earlier, and yeah, so we did that, and we did this keychain. I could give it to somebody, but that's what we did. So I appreciate y'all so much for hanging out with me tonight. As always, if I don't get a chance to see you on Thursday, um, have a great weekend. And I will see y'all again, if not on Thursday, next week, Tuesday. But thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for getting me through yet another project. I appreciate it. I love y'all. And uh, until next week or Thursday. Later, y'all. <laughs>